My question is, you had said that we're looking at a real down return. No, I'm just talking frankly about, you know, and I believe accurately about the data that we're about to see. Uh, because we've paused the economy, then there's a drop off in things like industrial production and employment and GDP and all the things that economists follow. And that drop off, which we're about to see, you know, in the next few weeks, we'll see like some major signs of it, is going to look like a drop that's as big as anything that we've seen since the Great Depression. That does not mean in any way that we're going to have a Great Depression, but it does mean that there's some serious policy challenges ahead. And I think that the first three phases of stimulus have done a good job of helping us build a bridge to the other side of this big major shock. But once we get to the other side of it, there's still going to be work to do. And that's why we need to have another round of legislation. There are a lot of small business owners who say they still can't get stimulus that has been offered and that the, the larger companies have gotten money that they was earmarked for them. How can you all rectify that? What are you going to do to stop Well, there have been uh, more than a million loans to firms that have 10 or fewer employees. Uh, that There were 1,800 banks making loans a couple weeks ago. It's up to 5,000 now. But what about uh, the and, larger and, companies? And so, well, though, so, so again, when, when you're making uh, these loans that are have very favorable rates in order to help businesses make it through, say, to the, the other side of, of the crisis, uh, then there's a risk that people would make up, you know, fraudulent businesses in order to take the loans and then just abscond with the would money. And, and so, and so, what the, the designers of the bill did is they said, well, if there's, you know, a, a bank with an existing customer that they have a strong relationship with, then that bank uh, will, you know will be empowered to lend to that customer. And so what they've done uh, since the bill, and the bill was incredibly successful at getting a massive amount of money out to small businesses that needed it. Again, with more than a million going to firms with 10 or fewer people. Uh, but I think that the second round specifically earmarked, I think it was $60 billion uh, for uh, you know, communities, distressed communities, and also added, uh, the regulators have added a huge number of banks up to about 5,000 to make sure that they are hitting everybody. But I, my, but, but, but my expectation is that, that, you know, if we run out of money again because the thing is so successful that everybody's getting the loans, then Congress will come back in and, and they'll put more money in that pool. But will there if, be if repercussions it's for the larger companies who have taken the smaller companies' money? You well, said there's fraud. It, so it, there's no, I'm, I didn't accuse no, a larger no, company of fraud. That, but you said there could be. So if there is. If there were fraud, of course, then it would be pursued aggressively. But I think that uh, for the most part, the policy has been just an enormous success. It's had a huge impact on, on really, you know, a million uh, small businesses with uh, employees, fewer than 10 employees. And the reason why we had to re up the money is that there's so much money uh, going out the doors to the people who need it. And, and so for sure, I know that there are. Uh, some some sad stories about people getting stuck at the website and so on, um, but you well, know there's the plenty of time for all that stuff to be worked out. Well, the there's part. some well there's some people who took loans and returned them, and you know that's that's something that's happened too. But they, certainly the vast majority of the loans uh, that have been made have been made to firms that were the target of the policy. And finally, just to follow up on what I asked you at first, when when I was, how do you? How do I put this? So, <laughs> if you have that drop-off that is as large or larger than the Great Depression, how do you avoid uh, an, an economy that collapses? Sure, that's that's exactly the right question, and it's the thing that we've been working very hard on. Uh, uh, you know, the team was working on it before I got back, and we've been working on it a lot since I got back. And the bottom line is that when you get a big negative shock like this, then you need big, aggressive policies like the ones the president has advocated and worked with Congress to enact. And so uh, we're not going to have a depression because we're not going to make the policy mistakes that they made back then. And we're going to have a much quicker recovery than we had after the Great Recession because we're not going to make the policy mistakes that the Obama administration made when they, uh, remember, told us there were shovel-ready projects and that if we bought a bunch of clunkers, it would revive the auto industry and so on. And so we're not going to make those mistakes. We're going to make great policies, and that's why we believe that we're going to not have a depression. But we are faced with the biggest shock that has hit this economy since the Great Depression. And you have to be frank with the American people about that. And so how do you bail out the people? The real fear is that you're going to bail out the large corporations and not bail out people. And no. do you put the, where do you put your I mean, if, if you look at the resources are uh, 
massive resources in checks mailed to people. Uh, I think 88 million of them have gone out already, if I've got the number right. Uh, massive amount of money for small business loans with more than a million mentioned this a couple of times, going to firms with fewer than 10 people, uh, bailout for hospitals who are disproportionately bearing the costs of this uh, COVID epidemic. And so I think that, that Congress has, in a bipartisan way, come together to address the problems prudently. And I think that President Trump's leadership is going to help us come out of this okay, for sure. But again, uh, when when that happens, when, when we come out on the other side, and, and the economy's back to, to where it was, the strong economy that Trump's policies gave us, then we'll have to look back at this and say, wow, those, those folks were hit with the biggest shock ever, and they did well. You know, what made that happen? Well, what made that happen is the leadership that we're seeing from this White House on policy. And how long do you think it will take to rebound? Yeah, that, that's going to depend on, on, on the next phase of uh, legislation for me to you actually be able to model. Park estimate. I, I have to wait and see what policies the president picks and what Congress uh, adopts, and then I can model it. Okay, right so now, there are too many unknowns. Ideal? I also need to know uh, what the path of the virus is, and you know when is when is there something that will treat it, and when is there a vaccine? And, and, and so, right now, it's. Years. Right now, look, looking ahead is something that I just don't have the modeling capability to do because there's so many unknowns. The unknown about the virus, uh, the unknown about what policies. But once we get the policies, which will be in three or four weeks, then I'll come back out here and I'll give you a firmer answer. But, but right now, you know, the, the next phase is probably the most important phase of stimulus. And uh, once we have that in our pocket, then we can model it and tell you how long we think this is going to last. Okay. There. Thanks. Thank you. Nobody else? Hey, Kevin. Hey, sure. Uh, <laughs> what about in terms of, of testing? I mean, do we have enough testing to, to make people comfortable enough to, to start getting back to work to resume some type of normalcy, or do we need more testing in? Uh, you, you should save that uh, question for Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci, because the, the question of, like, how much surveillance testing we need and so on is just outside my lane. I guess, what do you do? What, what, what tools do you have in the toolbox to get people back to going economically? Yeah, well, that, that you know, our, our job as economists is to analyze the things like, you know, what companies need loans in order to keep going and things like that. And, and so, you know, all of the tools that we use to help cure the economy are on display in the first three phases of the, of the bills that you see. What about oil? Yeah, the price of oil has, has been, you know, a really big part of the story, and it's something that we're studying very closely, but I don't have anything to announce right now. I'm not okay. taking the Clorox, baby. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not taking the Clorox. <laughs>